Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for week number six of season two of Live with Annie. It's always a treat to see our regular viewers joining us from all over the world, so thank you for being with us again. If you're new to Live with Annie, we really welcome you to our community and we hope we'll see you again as well. We know there are lots of ways you can be spending your time and it always makes us feel good when you take time to be with us. Last week we shared ideas for ways to organize your fabrics and projects. We revisited my home studio and also toured the Biani Fabric Library at our warehouse. As you saw, we have a lot of amazing fabric to play with. If you missed that episode or want to watch it again, remember that you can find all the previous 57 episodes of Live with Annie on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or at byannie.com. We'll put up all the links to make them easy for you to find. To thank everyone for joining us last week, we had two fun giveaways. Each person won a Contain Yourself pattern and a one-yard package of Soft and Stable. That's enough to make one large, one medium, and two small bins. Karen Snow and Barbara O'Neill were the lucky winners of those prizes. We can't wait to see what you make, Karen and Barbara. Today we are going to take a behind-the-scenes look at the process we use to turn all those beautiful fabrics into amazing Biani models. We have developed a pretty smooth process for organizing and keeping track of a multitude of projects, which I think you'll find interesting. You may even pick up some tips for organizing projects of your own. We use the models that we make to inspire you by sharing photos on social media, as well as sending models to stores for trunk shows, so we'll share some info about that system too. Because this process involves a lot of people and lots of parts of the warehouse, we have pre-recorded this part of the program. So I'm going to turn this over to Jake to get that started. Our fabric acquisition process begins with an email from the fabric company letting us know what's coming up. They'll tell us dates that the fabric will be released and when it will ship to stores and share images of the various fabrics in the collection. We'll review the fabrics and decide which collections will work well for our upcoming patterns and models. Then we contact the fabric company with our request. Because we don't always know exactly what we're going to make, and because it can be difficult to tell for sure which fabrics look best together, we usually request two yard pieces of each fabric in a line. I can tell you that this is a very efficient size that works well for the majority of our patterns. We have very few patterns that need more than two yard pieces, and even those can be modified to use a variety of fabrics to make them work. We use a database to keep track of all the fabrics and models made, so our next step is to enter the fabric into our system. When the fabric arrives, we store it in labeled boxes on the new fabric racks. This rack is front and center in our work studio, so the fabric is easy to access and use. As soon as possible, we go through the fabric and make plans for how it will be used. Glow and I begin by thinking about what new patterns we'll be releasing soon, as well as which of our older patterns could use new models. We make a list of models to sew, and then spread out all the fabrics on one of the upstairs work tables. We ooh and ah over them, and then begin to choose fabrics that will work well for the models on our list. Sometimes a fabric just tells us, I want to be a particular model, so even if that pattern isn't on our list, we listen. The vast majority of Biani patterns call for three fabrics, a main, a lining, and a coordinate, so we usually start by sorting the fabrics into sets of those three fabrics. Again, because we usually get two yards of each fabric, we know that some fabrics can be used in more than one set. Once we've got our fabric sorted, we'll fill out a sheet with the name of the planned pattern or patterns and a list of which fabrics will be used for main, lining, and coordinate. We lay out the fabrics, main on top, lining underneath, and coordinate folded narrowly and overlapping. 
Then we take a picture of the set to add to our database. Next, I enter the various projects that we've decided to make into the database, attaching the pictures for reference. Sometimes it's a while before we get to the project, so having a picture really helps. If the project we have planned requires quilted fabric, the next step is to get those fabrics ready for Linda, our longarm quilter. I put the lining fabric inside the main fabric and add a sheet designating what project the fabric will be used for. Once the fabric is quilted, Linda staples that note to the quilted piece, which is very helpful for us when it is returned to us. Linda chooses the quilting design and thread, but I'll usually try to let her know if we need to use both sides of a fabric set as the main fabric. The coordinating fabric goes in a separate bag along with the notes we made. That bag goes on our to be cut set of shelves or in the labeled box on the new fabric shelf so that it's easy to find when Linda returns the quilted fabric. Linda is really fast and we usually have the quilted fabrics back within just a few days. Then it's time to get things cut and ready to make the models. Marianne, our main model maker, lives about a hundred miles away, but she comes to town once or twice a month to deliver models and pick up more. She'll usually spend the day here helping me cut. We try to cut enough projects to keep her busy for a month at a time, so it is a long, busy day of cutting. My first step is to review the list of items we've planned and decide which models we'll cut that day. On a typical day, we'll cut out a dozen or more projects. Then I gather two copies of each pattern, one for me and one for Marianne, and find the designated quilted fabric and coordinating fabric. Then I go to work cutting the quilted fabrics. I generally try to start that at least a day before Marianne comes in so that I can help cut other pieces and ensure that we get everything done in a day. Often we've decided to cut more than one project from a piece of quilted fabric, so I study the cutting instructions and layouts carefully before I begin. After 20 years of making projects, I'm pretty good at figuring out the best way to get several projects out of a piece of quilted fabric. I'm always amazed at how well things work out. We usually have very little quilted fabric left once everything is cut. As I cut, I attach labels to the pieces and organize them in big 12 by 16 inch Ziploc bags by project. We use a tag gun, otherwise known as a quilt basting gun, to attach the tags. We talked a lot about the tag gun, how we label pieces, and more in week number 34 of season 1 of Biani Live. You may want to revisit that episode to get all the tips, including an idea for using a perforating blade to cut out the labels. As I'm working on that, Marianne is busy cutting the coordinating fabric, as well as the mesh, vinyl, strapping, interfacing, and so forth. Marianne refers to the planning sheet that we prepared earlier for color choices of zippers, mesh, fold-over elastic and hardware, and we consult if changes are needed. Then we take one last look at the back cover to make sure everything on the list is in the bag. Marianne has a good supply of SoFine number 50 thread at home, but she'll take a look at the fabrics and grab additional spools of thread as needed. While she's doing that, I enter the final colors for zippers, mesh, fold-over, and hardware into the database, change the project status to with sewist, and print a sheet for the project. It includes any special construction notes, which are helpful reminders if Marianne doesn't get to that project for a week or more. The list goes in the bag with all the pieces, and she's set to sew. Marianne usually leaves late in the day with a couple of bins of projects. Everything should be together in the bag along with the summary sheet for the project. This sheet includes deadlines as well as any special notes. We usually make a separate list of all the projects too and number them by priority. Then Marianne gets to work. As she works, she notes thread colors used for the project on the sheet and adds notes about any problems she may have had and notes any corrections she would suggest for the pattern. When the models arrive, I look them over and add the additional information from the sheet to the database. I assign a unique SKU to the model, print and attach the SKU to the model, 
and fill in the field to show that the SKU has been attached. The system triggers a message to Brooke and Trevor to let them know that the model is ready for photography, which is the next step in the journey for this model. Brooke and Trevor work together to take a variety of shots of each model. Front view, back view, side view, interior views, and more. They add props to the model for lifestyle shots and do their best to show all the project's features and to communicate how the model can be used. Once the models are photographed, Brooke edits them as needed, including removing backgrounds, and adds the photo to the database and Google Drive. These photos will go into the model gallery, which anyone can access online. They're also available to stores to use to advertise fabrics and classes. We use them on social media to inspire makers like you, and we also send them to the fabric companies for their use in their own promotions of the fabric lines. Once the photos are added to the database, the system triggers the last step in the process, which I call bag and tag. I find a bag of the appropriate size for the model and attach the label to the bag. Then I attach a tag to each model to identify the pattern that it represents. The model is then put in the appropriate labeled box and it's ready to travel the country in a trunk show. Let's talk next about the trunk show process. We love to send our models out to stores around the world. It's a great way to share our products with you, their customers, and it saves the store the time and effort of making their own models. It allows you to examine a model up close and personal to decide if it's a pattern that you'd like to make. And seeing a model in person always makes it easier to understand the pattern. We've developed a great system to make it easy for stores to borrow a trunk show that will suit their needs. Their first step is to fill out the trunk show request form at our website. The next step is for the store to pick the models that they want to borrow. The store receives the models, displays them in their store, and you get the opportunity to examine them up close and personal. When the store's agreed upon period is up, they return the models to us. Once the items are marked as returned, our system changes their status to available and they again show up on the list for another store to borrow. I put each model away in its box with its friends where they wait patiently for someone else to ask them to come visit. As you can see, a piece of fabric takes quite a journey getting from the fabric manufacturer to your store for a trunk show. We hope you enjoyed learning a little more about the process and that you will encourage your local quilt shop to borrow a trunk show soon. All right, we're back. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, tour of how those work. And um, it looks like Trevor has got maybe a couple questions posted. So it says, when you quilt the fabric, do you only quilt the exterior to the soft and stable, like only one side? And do you determine, determine the main and coordinating sides of head, ahead of time? The vast majority of the time, we are quilting main and lining fabric with soft and stable in between. Very seldom we have patterns where it's only main fabric quilted to soft and stable, but that's definitely not the norm. So normally when we are picking out fabrics, and you may have noticed when Glow and I were doing that, we try to sort everything into a main, a lining, and a coordinate all at once and um, and then we work with those sometimes we'll use that main with other coordinates because we may not have enough of that particular coordinate to get all the projects that we can get out of a two yard piece but um, for the most part we pick those three all at the same time what do you do with outdated or older models uh, <laughs> we actually have a whole pile of boxes with outdated models or ones that have been replaced with 2.0 patterns. A lot of them I use as gifts. Sometimes we donate them for when people are having fundraisers. I keep saying we're going to have a, a sale and, you know, do the proceeds to a good cause. We just haven't got that far yet. But right now, most of them are sitting in boxes waiting for a good home. Uh, one day we'll get there. How do you learn about upcoming trunk shows? That's a really good question. So 
Right now, we don't have any way on our website to let you know when stores have trunk shows, but any store that borrows a trunk show, I try to make sure to feature them on our Facebook Live during the time that they have a show in the store. And also, um, check with your local quilt shop. Quilt shops should do a good job of advertising that they have a trunk show there. And so if you can get on their mailing lists and follow them on social media, that's another good way to find out. If you're going to be traveling someplace and you want to know, you can always check with us too and we can let you know what stores have them. Last question is, what kind of machine does Marianne use? Marianne sews primarily on a Juki but she also has a Bernina, and I believe she has in the 7 series. She had bought one that she didn't like that was a little bit more than she wanted, so I know she downgraded. It might be even a 5 series machine. But I think she does the vast majority of her sewing on her Juki because she really likes how fast it is, and she also likes that it has an automatic thread cutter. Is that all the questions? All right. Thank you guys for, for um, being with us and for following along with that. We want to remind you that our fifth annual local quilt shop, shop contest is going strong. Um, it's actually already almost halfway over. So our question for you is, have you voted yet? Because during this contest, we encourage you to vote for your favorite shop and share a little bit about what makes them special. Not only do shops get to read all your wonderful comments, but thanks to our amazing sponsors, they're also competing for some really awesome prizes. So in addition to By Annie, our sponsors this year include the Jaftex Corporation, H&H Americas, HUW Distributors, and Shannon Fabrics. And you can find out more info about all the sponsors and details of the prizes at our website, which is lqscontest.com. But I also want to showcase each of our sponsors and their prizes. So in the last two weeks, we talked about the prizes that we at Biani are providing and also what the Jaftex Corporation is providing. So this week, I want to tell you a little bit more about a brand new sponsor to this year's contest because we are really excited to welcome H&H &H Americas as a sponsor this year. So H&H &H Americas is a brand new business to business trade show for the crafts industry and it's scheduled to take place in Chicago this coming June. So anyone who has a business in the fiber industry is invited to attend the show. The goal of the show is to bring together retailers, wholesalers, manufacturers, influencers, designers, and more to connect and move the whole industry forward. So H&H &H Americas has really generously offered a variety of prize packages for this year's contest, and they include free admission to the 2022 Chicago Trade Show and a special highlight on all their social media channels. And that applies for the grand prize and for all four runner-up winners. In addition, the grand prize winner will also receive a three-night hotel stay and a $500 travel reimbursement for the Chicago show. So we have been so thrilled to see the support shown to local quilt shops already in the contest. With half of the contest still to go, as of 10 o'clock this morning, we'd already received 21,372 votes for 1,370 stores in 11 countries. So we've, we've exceeded what we did last year already, and we still have half, half to go. So in the U.S., this is really interesting, Florida and Washington State have had the biggest turnout on the voter polls, accounting for nearly 18% of the total. And I thought that was really funny that voting was so strong in opposite ends of the country. For our international territories, Queensland, Australia, and Ontario, Canada are home to the most active voters. So voters for shops in Queensland and Ontario account for 42% of all the international votes so far. So good on you guys, but the rest of those countries need to get the vote out. It's been really fun to see the number of votes that have come in and all the creative ways that shops have worked to get out the vote. So this week, we are featuring three stores who have significantly increased their vote counts over last year's contest. 
and we're going to start with a scarlet thread who when we last checked had 370 votes which is 341 than they received more than they received last year and when I talked to Karen, who's the owner of Scarlet Thread, and asked her what they did different, she said, I guess we just worked harder. And I can tell you that Karen and her team are hard workers. Not only did they recently move all their operations to a new location in a new town, but they continue to present daily Facebook Lives Monday through Friday and every other Saturday. They also recently launched a revamped website that enables you to watch their live shows directly on their website. Karen shared with me that one reason she thinks they are able to do everything they do do is through their connection with Hope Farms, who is a recovery center for women in their area. Karen shared that they currently have nine women from Hope Farms working at the store. And she said their help enables us to make the kits and keep up with it all. We are so proud to support and work with the group. And I think it's just wonderful for those women to have such a positive and happy place to work. So our thanks go to A Scarlet Thread and Hope Farms for their help. And we send best wishes to everyone there on their journey to recovery. Another store that has garnered quite the buzz is the Quilting Bee in Spokane, Washington. The Quilting Bee currently has 515 votes, which is 502 more than they had in last year's contest. When we asked the wonderful folks over at the Quilting Bee what they've done differently to make such a big splash this year, they basically stressed the importance of sending out newsletters, sharing the message, doing all the little things consistency, and taking pride in their work. That's really good advice for so many things in life. So if you haven't already seen their store, you really need to check out this beautiful quilt barn themed shop. Built in 2017, it has 11,000 square feet, over 7,000 bolts of fabric, and offers six different brands of sewing machines. They host about 100 classes a month, offer free coffee, and even have a bunkhouse for spouses to relax in. The store is truly a quilter's destination. Take a look too at their very active and fun social media. I really enjoyed watching the fun Grinch ad they made around Christmas time. Finally, we go to Dade City, Florida to highlight Quilted Twins. They've had 742 people vote for them as their favorite local quilt shop. Compared to last year's 13 votes, they've skyrocketed as one of the top competitors in this year's contest. Rachel and Becky are the owners of the Quilted Twins, and as their name suggests, they are twins. Their paths have taken them to many wonderful places, each step largely inspired for their passion for sewing by their passion for sewing. The Quilted Twins began with Becky quilting and designing and Rachel sourcing and buying fabric by the truckload. Becky continues design to design and make quilts, but has taken her talents to Poland to focus her time and efforts in charity quilts for an orga organization called Noble Package, or in Polish, Slashinczka Paczka, I probably totally butchered that, but noble package is what I'm going with. Rachel and Ken, her husband, now take care of the daily operations at the Quilted Twins along with their wonderful team. As we read through the customer votes, they all seem to mention the patience and kindness that is shown to every customer that comes through the doors. No matter how busy it gets, every customer receives the help and attention they need to find and match fabrics. One voter, Beth, traveled all the way from Wisconsin to purchase a large quantity of patriotic fabrics for a charity project for veterans. Once Ken heard about her project, he offered a big discount for her noble cause. That's awesome. To reward Quilted Twins, Quilting Bee, and a Scarlet Thread for their hard work, each of these shops is going to receive a special mid-contest prize from our sponsor, Shannon Fabrics. 
Shannon Fabric's mission is to make the world a softer place, and their awesome cuddle and other plush fabrics do just that. So each of these stores that we featured today is going to receive a beginner box cuddle kit handpicked for them by Ellen at Shannon Fabrics. The perfect introduction to sewing with Cuddle Minky fabric, this kit includes three different one yard cuts, essential notions, plus a 32 page booklet called Learn to Sew with Cuddle, Six Easy Projects Designed for Beginners. Written with beginners in mind, it includes detailed information on working with Minky fabric, the tools that will make it easier, and clear instructions, including step-by-step -step video tutorials for making six different projects using three types of cuddle fabric. So congratulations to all those stores on your incredible growth in this year's contest. Keep up the good work. We can't wait to see how many votes everyone has by the end. To thank all of you for joining us this week, we are going to do something a little bit different. Rather than send prizes to viewers, we're going to ask you to nominate your favorite local quilt shop to receive a free Biani trunk show. We will send them six models of their choice, along with six patterns for each model. They will be able to keep the models for 30 days, so you'll have plenty of time to check them out up close and personal. And here's what you need to do to win this trunk show for your favorite local quilt shop. And remember, you need to do this on Facebook. It doesn't work on YouTube. So the first thing is to leave a comment. And in that comment, we would like you to tell us the local quilt shop to which you'd like us to send a trunk show. Due to customs restrictions, this should be a shop in the US. Also, tell us the six by Annie patterns you'd most like to see in that trunk show. We'd also love to hear what you think of our model making process and whether you have any tips to make us more efficient. If this sounds like something you'd enjoy being part of, let us know that too. Finally, we always enjoy hearing what you're up to and learning about your ideas for new patterns or other tips. Secondly, we're going to ask you to do a couple of tags this time. First, tag the local quilt shop because we want to spread the word about our weekly Facebook Live presentations and our LQS contest, so tag your local quilt shop. And we'd also love it if you'd tag a friend who you think would enjoy these weekly lives. And if you're not familiar with tagging, to do that, all you need to do is in the comment box, type the at symbol, follow that by the name that they use on Facebook. Their picture and name will pop up so you can make sure you have the right person. If you do click on that, it puts it into the comment box. You can finish adding your comment and click um, enter to submit it. We are going to pick winners from comments made by Midnight Mountain Time tonight, so you've got about nine more hours to watch and comment. And then finally, remember to check your Facebook messages. Uh, Trevor will notify our winner and get more information about the shop listed so that we can get the trunk show on its way. And thank you again to all of you for watching and for helping us keep local quilt shops strong and vibrant. So, we are going to be back next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with another great episode of Live with Annie. And our plan then is to start a at least seven part series um, titled By Annie Bag Making Basics. We're going to start next week by discussing tools and notions that we consider essential for bag making. From needles to sewing machines, we're going to share our favorites and tips for choosing those items. And then over the following weeks, we're going to talk about more helpful tools and supplies, share tips for choosing fabrics and coordinates, share tips for cutting, quilting, marking, pressing, and more. So in the meantime, be sure to vote for your local quilt shop and ask them to schedule a biennial trunk show too. Until next week, happy stitching.